After a night of drinking, eating, and swindling, you all take a long rest at the Stonehill Inn. You may all benefit from a long rest and go ahead and level up to level three. Dope. I've been looking forward to this. I get a bunch of spells. I picked Pact of the Tome for my boon. I'm taking Guidance, Mage Hand, and Prestidigitation for my three cantrips. I'm also taking Armor of Agathis and Shatter for my two additional spells I get for level three. Wow. We're going up in the world. More spells on your list than Hex or Eldritch Blast. Let's see if you end up using them. I get my meta magic for my third level in Sorcerer. I'm picking Twin Spell and Quicken Spell. I'm going to be blasting all the motherfuckers. I'm also taking Misty Step for my spell in case I need to leave you bozos behind to a group of zombies or something. Loyal as always, Don. I'm going with Swashbuckler for my roguish archetype. Uh, that gets me fancy footwork, which is basically a permanent free disengage against any target I hit with a melee attack. I also get rakish audacity, which means I don't need advantage or someone near an enemy to get sneak attack. I basically always get sneak attack unless I have disadvantage, unless I'm reading this wrong. That's cool. Ben let me join as a level three paladin, but I picked the Oath of Redemption for my subclass. I have an awesome channel divinity called Rebuke the Violent, which basically says if they deal damage to someone in the party that is not me, I can force them to make a wisdom save. And if they fail, they take the full damage they dealt back to them in Radiant or half as much on a save. I'm a fucking goblin. I don't get to level up. I'm just going to pull up the floorboards in my room and eat the bugs and rats living under the tavern instead of getting cool shit. Why doesn't Rogan have his own character sheet? We'll see if Droop survives Kragmaw. If he does, we may get him his own sheet with Goblin as his race. Otherwise, Rogan may have to re-roll. Wait, are you motherfuckers going to kill me? If he keeps taking my loot, I'll kill him myself. You all wake up fully rested and ready to start your day. The smell of sizzling bacon, fresh baked bread, and cider fills your noses as you all stir from your rest. What would you like to do? I step out of my room and go up to the bar and order some breakfast. I want the works. I go up and join Barack, but I ask for a bucket of dried corn. Why corn? I'm a bird. I like corn. I look at the bartender and yell, corn! Is this a corn pop joke? No, legitimately, I want corn because I'm a Kenku. Corn! Whatever, I sit away from Joe and order breakfast, too. I would have been up already. Sir George gets up before the crack of dawn, eats a ration, and is training with his new sword behind the tavern. I'm with George. I try to mimic his stances and swings, but do a really bad job at it. So, Barack, what's with this backstory of yours? I don't know. I guess you'll have to ask in character. You will notice a small black book sitting next to me at the bar. Fuck, all right. Hey, Barack, what's up with that book of yours? Oh, it's nothing. I put it away in my pack. What the fuck is that shit? The bartender brings you all your food, crisp bacon, scrambled eggs, apple cider, and fresh baked bread. Joe, you get a bucket of what seems to be chicken feed. Barack and Don, you pay five SP for that meal. Joe, you pay three CP. I tip the bucket up and start eating extremely loudly. We need to find out more information on where we can find Cragmaw Castle. Droop says he thinks he knows where it is, but I don't think we can rely on him. As you all eat your breakfast, a woman approaches you all. She is a middle-aged halfling with graying hair. She has a kind face and looks like she has lived a life of labor. She says, Hello, young men. I don't think I've had the pleasure. My name is Killeen. I can't help but overhear you're looking for something? Yeah, we're trying to find Cragmaw Castle. You know where it's at? Oh, goodness, no. I usually stay around town. Then why are you talking to us? I turn around and continue eating my breakfast. I apologize for my friend, ma'am. He's kind of an asshole, but what he says is correct. You're right. He is kind of an asshole. Well, the only reason I stopped by was to say that I have a friend by the name of Redoth. He's a druid, you see, and there isn't an inch of the land he doesn't know. Well, I can't tell you where this castle is. I can point you to where he is, and maybe he can help you. He frequents an old abandoned village called Thunder Tree. It's about 50 miles north, just east of Neverwinter. Should take you just a couple days to make it there, I reckon. Thank you, ma'am. That's very helpful. I pass her five silver pieces for her trouble. Oh, sweetie, there's no need. I'm just happy to help folk out. Tell Rydeth I say hello. Wait, Thunder Tree, that's the place where the captured woman in the hideout said there was an heirloom or something. Let's go there next. Anything for loot, huh, Don? Squaw! Corn! You all make your way back on the Tribor Trail, heading west, and going back towards where you started your journey with the intentions of taking the high road back towards Neverwinter and breaking off towards Thunder Tree. It is a crisp morning as you all make your way west on foot. You all see something off in the distance that is also on the trail, but heading towards you. Everyone give me a perception check. I got a five. That's an 18. I rolled a 13. I got an 11. I rolled an eight. Barack, you can tell that this is a small trading wagon. It has a covered back. A single dwarven male is holding reins to two brown stallions pulling the cart. 
I think that's a trader up ahead. Maybe we can see what he has for sale. Or we could collect a road tax. I know you're not suggesting robbing this poor man. Of course not. It's not robbery if it's a tax. I thought you hated taxes. Yeah, but I'm not the one paying this time. I wave the bozo down. When he gets closer, you wave him down. The dwarf pulls on the reins and the stallions come to a halt. He gives you all a wide smile and says, Greetings, travelers. My name is Dalgun Blazearm. I'm a traveling leather worker. Would any of you be interested in some gear? Oh, me? Hell yeah, man. Do you got any studded leather armor? Squaw! I definitely do, laddie. Let me get the tarp off. Dalgun stands up and starts to remove the tarp from his wagon. I ignite a flame in my hand and prepare to cast Firebolt. When he turns back around to us, I'm going to give him an ultimatum. Oh, the hell you are. I take a step in front of Don with Talon drawn. You will have to go through me before you do a heinous act such as this, Don. You guys are fucking losers. Fine, I won't do it. Dalgan shuffles around and pulls out some leathers from the back of his wagon. He's holding a Joe-sized set of studded leather armor. He turns to face the group, looks to Joe, and says, It'll be 55 GP for the set, sir. Ooh, that's a little steep. That's a whole extra point of AC. I start digging through my coin pouch for the gold. The stallions rear back, startled as the brush moves around you all. With a loud war cry, six orcs rush out and charge you all. Everyone, roll for initiative. I got a nine for initiative. I got an eight. 23, baby, let's go. I got a nine. 15. All right, Joe, you're up first. I move out to attack an orc on the outside of their charge so they don't surround me. I roll a 22 to hit with my rapier for nine piercing damage with an additional seven from sneak attack damage. Since I have rakish audacity, I get sneak attack because no other enemy is within five feet of me. Awesome, Joe. You got him. How do you do it? That's how you start combat, boys. I, Naruto, run around to the orc's flank and with a mighty squaw. I leap into the air and slash at his throat and turn them into an orc sprinkler system with their carotid artery. That's brutal. An orc charges at you, Don, and attacks you with his great axe. He swings it down and you successfully dodge its attack. While strong and angry, it easily telegraphed its attack. Dalgon takes his turn to calm the horses and reaches into the back of his wagon and pulls out a crossbow. Another orc charges, but this time at George. His great axe swings down and you successfully block it with your shield. An orc charges Barak and swings his great axe. He cleaves his great axe into your side, dealing five slashing damage to you. Rogan, it's your turn. I climb up on the wagon next to Dalgon and say, Imes is on your side, don't hurt Stroop. And I draw an arrow and aim my short bow at the orc attacking Barak. I rolled a seven to hit. You draw your arrow to shoot it, and it goes way too high and shoots off into the brush off the road. Another orc charges at Don and swings his great axe. He cleaves it down into your shoulder and pulls it out of you recklessly, dealing 11 slashing damage to you. I use my channel divinity, rebuke the violent on the orc. He needs to make a DC 13 wisdom save or take 11 radiant damage, half on a save. He makes the save, taking 5 radiant damage. George, it's your turn. I attack the one next to me with Talon. 13 to hit for 9 slashing damage. I'm going to use a spell slot to divine smite him for an extra 6 radiant damage. So 15 damage in total. That's just enough to kill him. How do you do it? I slash across their chest. Holy radiant energy pulsing through Talon lets me slice through the orc like a hot knife through butter. I kick him back and he falls to the ground. Awesome. Barack, your turn. I cast Shatter, getting as many orcs as I can within its range, but not attacking any allies. They need to make a DC 13 con saving throw or take 14 thunder damage or half on a save. You're able to get three of them in your Shatter. Two of the orcs save, one doesn't. You send a loud Shatter throughout the woods, kicking up brush, dirt, and leaves everywhere. You hear the cracking of bones from the orcs as they let out howls of pain. Don, you're up. I'm hurting pretty bad. I'm going to burning hands the two in front of me. 14 fire damage, DC 13 dex save. They both fail, and it's enough to get them both. Tell me how you do it. Take that, you motherfuckers. I blast them both with magical fire from my hands, burning the flesh off their faces and blasting them back. An orc that was hit by Barak's shatter, but yet to charge anyone, turns around and runs off into the forest, screaming for his life. Joe, we're back up to you. I squawk at the running orc. Squaw! Coward! Then I run up and attack the one next to Barak. I stab at him with my rapier. Ouch! That's an eight to hit. Not enough to hit him. You miscalculate where your hit will land, and you stab between his side and his arm, getting nothing but air. Dalgan's turn. He shoots his crossbow at the remaining orc. He aims down the sights and fires the bolt, sticking the orc right in the eye. It's enough to cause him to collapse. With that, combat ends. Dalgan lowers his crossbow and says, I'm glad I met you all when I did. I don't think I could have handled that. Forget the payment. Please take the studded leather armor for my gratitude. 
I take the armor from Dalgon and thank him for his generosity. What, no gold reward? Helping is its own reward, Don. I wish Dalgon well and tell him to have safe travels. Dalgon thanks you all again as he whips the reins and his wagon continues down the path carried by the stallions. What a load of shit, George. He owed us so much more since we saved his life. Weren't you just trying to shake him down for gold before the fight? Shut up, you short little shit. I put on my new armor and do a happy dance. Squa. You all travel until the twilight hours, taking the high road north to Neverwinter. You are all tired from the combat and set up camp off the side of the road. A roaring fire is created. Your tents and bedrolls are set up. The sounds of hooting owls fill the night air. A bright moon hangs in the sky as fog rolls in around the trail. I take a seat near the campfire and pull out my black book and start reading it to wind down for the evening. I take a seat next to Barack and say, I see you're reading some kind of book. What is it about, if I can ask? Oh, this, it is to my god, Pelor. I like to read some verses before I sleep. Barack, check your phone. Okay. What the fuck? Why is Barack rolling? None of your business, Don. Don't be meta. It's good to be traveling with another man of faith. Uh, I assume it's where your innate magical powers come from. He's a fucking warlock, and you know it. The bastard is hiding something with that fucking book of his. Don, quit being meta. You're ruining the role play. But I know what's happening. Barack probably rolled deception and beat clueless George's passive insight. You really don't understand what role play is, do you, Don? Yeah, you kind of ruined the scene, Don. Fine, I'll shut up. Anyway, I turn to George and say, yes, it's something like that. I'm polishing the studs on my new armor while eating more corn out of my bucket I stole from the tavern this morning. Squaw, corn, leftovers. I found a stick and I'm by the road, sticking it in the ground to pull up worms and eating them. As you're gorging on worms, Droop, you notice a carriage being pulled down the road going north towards Neverwinter. However, it's not an ordinary carriage. It's being pulled by two ethereal horses. The smell of brewing potions fills the air as the lit carriage has a wizard inside of it reading a book. There are magical components, books, bags, and other wizard-like objects stacked haphazardly inside and outside of the carriage, some sitting on the outside edges. I run alongside the carriage and wave at the wizard. He ignores you, continuing to read whatever book he's interested in. I want to grab something off his carriage. Give me an acrobatics check to leap up and nab something. I rolled a 16. Let's go. Sure. You jump up to the back ledge of the carriage and nab what seems to be a small wooden container around the size of a bread box. I giggle evilly and take it back to the camp. 